Prime Video has finally released the name of its upcoming Lord of the Rings series, The Rings of Power. Now this video isn't just a reaction to that video. How do I feel about the name reveal video? It's pretty cool. Apparently it was all practical effects, which is awesome. You know, the shots of the molten metal and the wood paneling and the oozing and pouring and misting and all that, it was really cool. <laughs> I really did like it. There were a couple of shots that, yeah, probably could have used a little more time baking in the oven, but overall, very cool reveal video. However, what's really interesting about it is the name, because it gives us a few hints about what we might be able to expect from the new Lord of the Rings series. I guess now we can just call it the Rings of Power. That's actually quite a relief. Now, what we knew before was that this story would take place in the second age of Middle-earth, where the Lord of the Rings takes place at the end of the third age. This would be thousands of years in the past, but we didn't know much more than that. With this name though, we do get a little bit of a hint about what it might be about. So this video is going to be more about some wild, wild speculation. Yeah, it'll probably end up being wrong, but who cares, let's have some fun with it anyway. The Rings of Power refer to the three, the seven, and the nine that you hear about in the prologue of the Lord of the Rings in the movie version. They were forged in the Second Age, year 1500, about halfway through the Second Age. Now, this isn't the most interesting part of the story necessarily, but it could make a really good backdrop. Maybe a prologue similar to what we got at the beginning of The Fellowship of the Ring, maybe some flashbacks throughout the season, something like that. The basic gist of it is that Sauron, who at this point is still able to look really nice, tricks the elves into inviting him into their councils. Uh, he gives them all sorts of lore, all sorts of knowledge. Uh, and the elves at that time, the Noldor, who uh, live in that region, they lap it up. So he helps them create these rings uh, and imbues them with his own kind of secret sauce on the side. And of course, that will come into play later when he gifts the rings to dwarves and men. But we'll get there in just a second. About 50 or 60 years later, after these rings are forged, over on the island of Numenor, some interesting things are taking place. Tar Telperion is the queen of Numenor. She takes power at that time. And she's a pretty interesting figure. The Numenorians not only have really long lives, but they also have the ability to lay down their own life voluntarily when they feel like they've reached the end of their lifespan. So it's been tradition up to this point for the rulers of Numenor to give up their ruling scepter to their heir a few years before they die. This queen though, Tar Telperion, refuses to do that. She doesn't give up the scepter until the very bitter end, right before her death. Now, how big a deal is that? Maybe not such a big deal, but it does kind of give you a preview of the pride of Numenor, which would eventually lead to its downfall. So this place that was the wonder of the world for 1500 years and would continue to be for a long time, don't get me wrong, it is now kind of falling into that pride cycle and will eventually fall because of it. And Tar Telperion gives us the beginning of that. Now, in the middle of her reign, around the year 1590, so another 40, 50 years later, the Three Rings are forged by Celebrimbor, the most talented of the elven smiths of his age. Now, Celebrimbor forged the rings by himself without the help of Sauron, but that doesn't mean that Sauron didn't have his influence because Celebrimbor was still using the techniques that Sauron had used years and years earlier to teach them how to make rings of power. So if we're thinking of it like software, then Celebrimbor is making his own program, but he's still using Sauron's base code. Eventually, about a decade after that, Sauron would forge the One Ring in the fires of Mount Doom, and we're all familiar with that particular part of the story. Story. When he does that and he puts on the One Ring, the elves become aware of the trick that he has played on them, that the One Ring is designed to control all of the others. Not only can it influence you, but it can almost kind of mind control you if you're not careful. So the elves take off their rings of power, they hide away the three, and Sauron ends up going to war with them over it. He goes and demands the rings of power back, and the elves refuse, they won't give them up, and so Sauron makes war on them, he invades the lands of the north, from his outpost in Mordor. He does gather back most of the Rings of Power, but doesn't collect the three that Celebrimbor made. Eventually, he'll distribute the ones that he did collect, and that's where we get the seven and the nine for dwarves and men. And then for the next decade or so, Sauron and the elves are at war in the north. Eventually it gets so bad that the elves send for help from Numenor, that's where Queen Tar Telperion is, 
Now the Numenorians aren't far gone yet, right? We're just kind of beginning to see the, uh, the inklings of their pride. So she does end up sending forces to Middle-earth. They crush Sauron and send him scurrying back to Mordor, and everybody lives happily ever after. Yeah, no, just kidding, they don't. But that does make a good end to maybe a first season of this show, and then there are plenty of other stories to tell after that. There's one that they might tell. I kind of hope they do. It seems like it'd be cool. You could have that uh, balance of Numenor and Middle-earth, the elves and the Numenorians, uh, fighting off Sauron, fighting off their own pride, that sort of thing. Could make for a lot of good drama. Anyway, what are you hoping for from this series? Go ahead and hit the comments, let me know. I'd be uh, glad to hear what you think. Let me know if I got anything wrong in this video. I don't think I did. I'm pretty sure I got all my facts straight. <laughs> but anyway, hit those comments, like and subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. See you next time. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie.